Hey guys, so Ryan aka Ruggles hosted a few of us for a Yu-Gi-Oh testing session and so it's been really really fun and very helpful so I'm going up against Ryan who's facing uh, or rather he's playing heroes and I'm going to be playing uh, the Cyber Dragon sprite strategy that I featured on my channel recently and so if you for some reason have not uh, seen Ruggles channel yet definitely go check it out and make sure to subscribe makes amazing vlogs as well as other videos with just excellent cinematography and is really really one of the highest quality uh, videos out there and so I'll also actually have another video against uh, Distant Coder who is also here um, and so I'll post that later this week as well uh, where I'm also facing Cyber Dragon Sprite or rather I'm playing Cyber Dragon Sprite and so uh, with uh, Heroes uh, honestly pretty good deck as a rogue strategy even now because Dark Law is just very very strong so he's gonna start off with that Stratos uh, really uh, the best starter in this deck probably well I guess technically Hero Lives uh, is really nice too uh, but He's gonna get that Ferris, and then uh, Ferris is something that can, you know, usually you pitch like a hero, special it, and then you can uh, get that increase. So that's what he's doing, and he's actually pitching the Shadow Mist, which is very nice uh, because Shadow Mist can also trigger. But in right for now, uh, we're gonna have that Ferris um, put that increase in the spell and trap zone, and so that is. Um, it's a tr it's considered as a trap which is something that can come up in times because essentially as a trap you know it can be a quick effect so let's say you try to like shotgun and try to pop it then he could just uh use that effect for example and tribute off uh, he's also going to add that denier off the shadow mist and now uh increase is going to tribute off that ferris to special and then Inc vision here increase will also uh special another hero vision here increase is uh, pretty strong and something you do have to account for whenever it's in the grave and you deal damage to the hero player because it is going to come back to that spell trap zone and then it does give them another uh you know combo enabler on the next turn if they have another hero to tribute off and he's gonna get the uh vion which is another very strong card uh, it's gonna dump that Mali. Uh, at the moment, it is at two. It's gone back from three to two, like back and forth, maybe like ten separate times. But now that Denier is in uh, the game, perhaps it will just stay at that two. And so next, uh, he is gonna go into the uh, Cross Cru Crusader, which for some reason is still uh, not a hollow, uh, only a rare. And so now he's gonna bring back the Mali. He's gonna tribute out off and add the uh, Destiny Hero. Uh, the plasma which is essentially like a one-sided skill drain very 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 strong so uh, on top of that you know heroes they have a lot of options right because they have dp which can do like the repeated pops they have that skill drain in plasma dark law in itself is very strong against tears to a point where there are uh, decks that are playing uh, mass change 2 to be able to go into dark law in the mirror for example very strong and also dark angel which can like negate spells and just just generally just super strong so he's gonna start or he's gonna go with the poly go into dp and that poly uh was a legend of blue eyes edition actually very very nice to see and so dp obviously a very strong card we're all familiar with it at this point a lot of us were uh running that in uh, a lot of different decks when anaconda was still legal but i am glad that the dp stuff uh kind of got indirectly hit uh pretty pretty early uh as much as i love anaconda I just DP was uh, really really strong when it was just being splashed in almost every deck and so it, it's it's nice that it only lasts a few months so he's gonna get the Mali again because the denier put it back to the top of the deck and so you can see why Mali probably won't come back to three anytime soon he's gonna summon that plasma which is that one-sided skill drain uh, so you know even with this it may not look like much but like how, how do you without like a generic going second like staple cards I, I mean imperm would have been nice which is what i was hoping to dig for uh but it, it is very very strong uh and he doesn't have mass change set of course so no dark law at least so it's kind of nice but uh definitely hard if you don't have uh, monster negation cards and that's something with the cyber sprite strategy right now because it's actually going first build whereas traditionally cyber drans are meant to go second you have a lot of outs to a board like this unfortunately i didn't in my opening hand and that's something i have to consider you know for example some people let's say main deck dark ruler no more even when it's a going first strategy but the thing is this particular list and the cyber drans in general uh it's not as uh <laughs> it needs its uh i guess enablers and it's not as you know it's not a tier one deck for a reason right it's it can't just pop off very easily like some of the other top decks can and so we do need uh several pieces for things to work and so right now i i think it would be pretty hard to find space for dark ruler but definitely uh imperm i do play which i was hoping to uh excavate with the prosperity here but unfortunately i actually only get you know just your sort of you know quote unquote combo pieces 
So I choose the Galaxy Soldier here. Um, honestly, it didn't really matter what I chose. That there was just no way I could actually play through this, unfortunately. Um, but you know, I at least give it a try. I special the Cybertron. You could go into Mega Fleet. The problem is again the plasma because it would negate effects. It would actually go back to zero attack. And so at this point, um, we're gonna contact fuse into the fortress again because it would uh, its effects negated. It's going to zero. <laughs> it's putting defense. Well, honestly, uh, this, this game is pretty hopeless. Uh, but, and again, summoning the core really doesn't do anything. Uh, I'm just trying to do something, but really, I'm uh, quickly f uh, realizing there's just nothing I can do. Um, so I am summoning it. You know what's funny though? Because Core's effect is mandatory, it does actually have to still try to trigger, which means, you know, in the instance for some reason someone plays Ogre, for example, uh, you would still be able to like pop it if it uh, were to trigger. But I do scoop here, so let's just go into game two and see if we can do anything going first. Alright, so we are going into game two, and we actually did not side. Uh, we were basically just playing three game ones, essentially. Uh, Ryan didn't actually have a side deck for the hero list, uh, so it's okay. You know, we get to actually show what this deck would do uh, going first in the main deck. Uh, we're going to start off with the core. We did have a hand. We did have the hand to go into Infinity. Unfortunately, getting met with Valor uh, or Imperm is actually very, very strong against the core, because not only can you not search, it's no longer treated as Cyber Dragon. If you were to play Machine Do, for example, then uh, it would not work in the way that you would hope. But we do have the Sprite Blue, which is nice, so our Sprite stuff is live. And uh, we are going to add the Sprite Jet here. And so Core is a level 2, that's why I was able to summon the blue for those of you wondering. And then now we're going to special the Jet. You can get like something like Starter. Uh, usually I try to actually get Smasher. Uh, so just so we have also uh, interruption in the form of board breakers. Because for example, if you get hit by Dark Ruler, then you just straight up lose with this particular list. And so next, uh, we're gonna go... I do initially think about going into Gigantic, but the thing is, Gigantic is certainly a magnet for hand traps and my play would just end there. So instead, I actually go right into Almarsh first, and the reason for that is because I had Ethereum King Regulus in hand, and I did want to get that core in the grave, uh, which means, you know, there's a machine in grave, so then I can actually bring out that Regulus just to have that Omni Negate before we go into Gigantic. Uh, you know, people are not really playing Nibiru anymore, so something uh, to consider, but uh, that's why I wasn't too worried. And so now we're going to Gigantic, and we're going to use the effect, and we'll detach the jet, and then we can summon. So this is a different addition from uh, what my profile, uh, thanks to Carlos Zalea for uh, convincing me to do this, because originally I was never really a fan of the Gale Dogra, but in this particular build, it's kind of fun. Uh, so Gale Dogra, it's a really old card actually, so you pay 3,000 life points and you send a monster from the extra deck. Uh, to the grave, and this is something you saw in certain sprite lists. Uh, not really, because you know, Sprite Frog can do much better than Gale Dogra, but we are gonna get that schism, and we'll have to discard the card, and we will discard that ga dead galaxy soldier now because we were not able to search off of the core and we can no longer make infinity. So, we basically have a wind up play live on the opponent's turn, and th with that, you know, on top of that, Regulus, we also almost had an infinity on top of that as well, so that's too bad. And if we had Clockwork Knight on top of that, then you know. Against certain decks, it could serve as a floodgate against heroes that won't do anything but the 500 attack and defense boost, whereas your opponent will lose the 500, can actually uh, come up, especially when something like Winda now gets like super jacked up, or even like your Sprite Red or Carrot, uh, they get jacked up um, that, you know, you can't just easily attack over. So we essentially just end on the IP, Elf, uh, the Therian, and then we have three sets, which uh, one is Schism, the other is Smasher, and the other, I can't remember what the last one was, might have been, I think it was an Imperm actually, which we will see. Uh, and so now we do pass turn here. So Ryan is going to start off with the Hero Lives, and this is where we will chain the Schism, because, uh, well, once we get Winda, then he already uses up his one special summon that he has, essentially. And the thing with this Winda line of play, it is weak to Bestials, though. I mean, heroes, I don't believe they play Bestials much, because especially something like Hero Lives, you know, you have to control no monsters, so that could conflict if they're using Bestials on the opponent's turn. He's going to use the Stratus effect. It actually does have two effects, guys. Uh, aside from the search, it can also pop back roll. I'm just going to imprim it because, uh, you know, the Stratos is a pretty uh, key choke point in the deck. Of course, the deck has a lot of different uh, plays. And also, uh, Imperm Valor is kind of risky against hero players because they could chain mass change to dodge that. And so we also on resolution will Elf bring back the... I like to bring back the Jet in these instances instead of the blue. Just in case my board gets clear, then I'd rather just have a starter instead of like, let's say you add Jet off blue, but you just have like no bodies anymore. So I personally like uh, getting Jet in this kind of scenario. 
So we do still have the Omni Negate life with the Therian and the IP. I was originally playing Unicorn, but I kind of switched it to Avermax because I find now that I'm playing Schism and I already have to discard a card, I don't want to have to discard another card with Unicorn, which I might just not have, honestly. This card is not the most uh, card economy efficient. <laughs> so uh, I think Avermax is uh, pretty decent, especially when paired with the IP protection he's gonna use talents though which i am a little bit afraid of i do have the regular stuff which i will negate uh, i think he was trying to draw two and i think that is game because he's already used up his summon uh, he did have a mass change actually but again i guess because i did have the uh, schism when window he wasn't able to do it but that is something i wanted to mention when you're trying to imperm a uh, hero monster so let's just move on to game three Alright, so we are moving on to game 3, and as mentioned earlier, uh, technically we're not siding for this one, so it's technically uh, another game 1 where Ryan is going for us. And with this Cyber Dragon spread strategy, I am certainly realizing uh, how uh, it can be pretty weak uh, if you lose a Daryl in a game 1 situation. I mean, to be fair though, uh, Heroes, it's not a good matchup as I mentioned. Like Clockwork Knight can usually be very good going second, which is nice, but against Heroes with Dark Law, you can't contact Fuse, which uh, really does shut down a uh, key. Um, mechanic with this new uh, variant and so he's gonna start off with the hero lives again pay half his life and get the shadow mist which will get him the mass change and that alone just making dark law against cyber dragons is <laughs> pretty strong and again because i'm not siding uh you know not much monster negation in my deck in the main deck and so he is now going to do the Vision Hero Ferris uh, combo. He did have an increase, but this is why uh, he plays a uh, second increase. Uh, certainly something that I think hero players uh, argue about, whether you play one, whether you play two. From what I've seen, I think uh, a lot of people are playing two um, just to have it, make sure that it's live. Uh, and then now he's going to dump that Mali. Now he's just going to banish that Ferris, uh, I believe with Vion, so that he can search the Poly. Bion is just such a good card, really. Next, he is going to just link those two monsters off for the, uh, I believe, Cross Crusader. Yep. And also, I should mention uh, the playmat you're seeing is the uh, Cloth playmat uh, from Imperium Duelist. Uh, it's a super, super sick uh, playmat. Looks really nice. Uh, and so a big thanks to them. You can always uh, check them out at ImperiumDuelist.com and you can also use code Hakuna10 for 10% off. They have some really cool stuff uh, such as binders as well as the oversleeves uh, and you'll probably see my uh, the oversleeves uh, from Imperium Duelist for my extra deck at least. So he's gonna summon the uh, Stratos and also get the Plasma. Next he will banish the Mali and just get himself another Mali onto the field. Uh, very easy to get a lot of bodies on uh, with this deck. And it's also a plus side for heroes because Nibiru is not played uh, essentially at all in this format. Although to be fair, uh, in the new iteration of Heroes Honesty, uh, they can actually uh, play through Nibiru uh, pretty well. And so it's not like the old days where it was kind of like the running meme where they just died in Nibiru. Uh, it's not certainly that anymore, especially because they at least, at the very least, have DP, uh, which can just come back. So now he's just going to attribute those three off and bring out the uh, Plasma, which is again is that one side of scale drain. He does set one. We know he added Mass Chain, so we know that's what it's going to be. Again, the board does not look too strong, but it's actually very strong uh, because a negate on top of Dark Law where all of your cards are banished. And on top of that, anytime you add a once return, uh, it will rip another card out of your hand. And if you have multiple Dark Laws, they're actually not like a once per turn or anything, so, or uh, rather not a hard once per turn, so they can actually rip multiple cards if they have like two Dark Laws on field. So he also gets the Honest Neos, which essentially protects him from battle as well, because it's going to pump by 2500, so it's just really strong. Of course, this does uh, kind of lose to Dark Ruler, uh, although he does have that Honest Neos again as part of that battle protection. Uh, but yeah, this deck, especially without siding, is very difficult to go through this. I'm going to try again, just to at least kind of get that imperm and uh, use prosperity for six and so we're going to excavate excavate the clockwork knight uh soul drain uh which is something i'm maining instead of the summon limit now that i have window in this list compared to what i showed on my deck profile uh recently and <laughs> schism so this excavation is really bad uh just cards that are would have been good actually going first aside from like the schism obviously that's not something you want to ever draw uh but unfortunately uh we don't have that imperm and didn't, uh, I believe Imperm is probably the only hand trap in this particular uh, list because we're going first. Uh, I do definitely want to try out the going second traditional Cyber Dragon variant as well. Uh, it would have done better actually against heroes in general, especially just not being at the side at all. 
So I'm just going to add the Cyber Emergency. Realistically, it doesn't matter too much uh, because I just can't really go through this. I mean, initially I did have what I thought was a line of play to work this up, but I'll quickly explain why that wasn't going to work anyway. So now Dark Law is going to trigger and then uh, rip a card out of my hand, which of course will get banished because of Dark Law's uh, existing effect right now. And so I'm going to chain starter. And the reason for this was because I was hoping that if he did not snipe the smashers, I would actually be able to like banish one of the monsters here. The problem was I quickly realized, oh wait, no, the starter is going to get banished as well with Dark Law. So then it actually was not going to work. I mean, if I had another sprite monster in hand or card rather, I could, it could have worked, but he also sniped the smasher anyway. So it wasn't going to work anyways, even if I did, uh, was able to get that live. So that kind of sucked uh and so not not too much uh line of play available for me uh definitely against banishing cards so when you're going up against decks that are playing shifter such as flunder or i i don't know let's say even like exo sisters i i think it's gonna be pretty hard with the cyber dragon sprite strategy uh pre-side at least i mean we just summon the core uh <laughs> again cannot uh resolve that effect because of the plasma so yeah, I do just uh, <laughs> scoop here, uh, un unfortunately. Uh, also, keep in mind, you can't even use Galaxy Soldier uh, because of Dark Cloth. So again, Cyber Dragons uh, just does not have a good matchup against heroes. Uh, but it was really fun. Definitely some things to work out with this deck. But, you know, uh, going for... Oh, there's that Impro. That would have been helpful. Uh, but, you know, really great. Uh, and certainly had a lot of fun. So hope you enjoyed that and hope that was uh, somewhat interesting. And stay tuned for another gameplay against Disencoder very soon this week. Take care, everyone.